What's good, everybody? This is Coach Phil, and welcome to another episode of Deep in the Game. And we've got, actually, I don't like using the term backup just because it gets kind of a bad rap, but this dude right here with all the bullshit going on right now, I hope he becomes the starter at some point in time, man. We got Cameron Dukes in the building. Cameron, how you doing, brother? Yes, sir. I'm feeling good. Yes, sir. Living good. Feeling good. Man, ready. Excited to be on here. I appreciate you having me on here, Coach Phil. Hey, thank you for hopping on, man. I see you. I'm, first of all, let me just say, man, it's the hair, man. It's the hair. What, 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 what do you, well going, what do you call it, man? Is it a mullet? Is it what, what you got going? <laughs> no, no, no. Let me clarify. No mullet here. <laughs> <laughs> he got a, he got a dirty he got a dirty shag going on. I yeah, we got we got the shaggy stuff going here, man. I've been growing up my whole life. Made a mistake. Try to get the little undercut fade, and I've been in oh. the awkward stage of growing it out. Oh man, I had somebody mess it up, and you know we're just back on the process, enjoying the process of growing this stuff back out, man. What what you put in it, man? Some moves? What you put in it? You got some blue magic? Yeah, gotta, you got to have the shampoo conditioner. Got to have both. Not 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 the two in the one, not two in one. Just shampoo conditioner separate. You gotta have the leave in conditioner. Yeah. Uh a little bit of mousse, you know, a little bit of hold. And then we just let it air dry. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put you on to some uh herbal oil, man, and you're gonna be walking around, okay. man. They're gonna they gonna think you you one of us every now and then, you know what I'm saying? Well, but, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna let you live. You a country boy, man. So let's get into it, man. You ready to get deep in the game, brother? Yes, sir. Let's do it. All right, man. So, Cameron Dukes, born, raised, Shepherdsville, Kentucky. Now, when I think of Kentucky, <laughs> I think of get her dog and all, you know, please. Get her dog, baby. <laughs> please clarify what is it like growing up in Shepherdsville, Kentucky, man. It's usually we hear about University of Kentucky football, basketball, uh, Louisville yeah. with Cardinals and all that, but playing football down there, man. What's good with it down there? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Um, you know, I grew up in a – like a smaller town. I don't want to say a small, small town, but a you know, smaller town uh, than what I'm used to now living in Toronto, that's for sure. Um, but, I mean, it, we grew up just honestly in the in the woods. Like, I grew up next to a 400-acre farm. Next to the other side of my house was 40-acre farm, and huh? it was just me. And a lot of times it was throwing the trees out in the back backyard and running hills in the backyard. And when I could go to my cousin's house, we were playing street football in the – in the streets waiting yelling for cars everybody get out of the road cars coming you know so anytime we could be active and get around people it was great but you know i grew up in the like i said and like you said in the countryside so not much uh hanging out with people all the time you know so yeah great catch right there though the quickness See, is i still i still got it i still got it. <laughs> i'm not taking this out this come on now oh this is perfect i was waiting on it at some point through this <laughs> my kids is laughing at it that see hey either you don't you got it coach you got it hey 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 <laughs> <laughs> shut up <laughs> hey and this is why I try to get up out the hood anyway the devil is alive oh man I'm that's beautiful that's beautiful man so going up good. out there <laughs> going up out there man Throwing the trees, man. Who were where did this first of all, where did this swagger come from that you got, man? Because I used you in one of my thumbnails for what I think was the game that you did start uh like this past season, man. You got it was the swagger, it was the pointing, it was when you did <laughs> score, you you scored in the eastern final. I think it was you scoring the eastern final. You was still y'all yeah. was down, but you showed up with had some swagger. So where did that come from? Yeah. And uh tell us about that, man. Yeah, I think um for the most part, I just have a uh, belief in myself, confidence in myself. Um, but at the same time, I'm humble about it. I don't like to, I, it's hard to say. I don't like to showboat. Cause you know, like I do the dance in the end zone, but I think for me, it's just having fun with the game. Like I realize what it is and it's a, we're, we're playing a child's game and we're fortunate enough to get paid to, to do it. And, you know, I, I try not to lose sight of that. So, you know, even when I got in the Eastern conference final, like, this is a CFL, man. What I've learned in my first year of doing this is this game ain't over until it's over. You know, there's right. so many ways to score, and, you know, you could just feel the energy of the crowd. You know, we, we get in the end zone, and so I just try to do a little bit of something extra. I got I got in trouble with my first touchdown because I didn't dance. Some of the guys were like, hey, man, you got to start dancing. You're going to score. So I had to pull out some moves there, here and there now. <laughs> you, got some, you got some moves, my dog. You got some moves, man. I ain't going to hold no. you, but – 
tell us, man, who were some of your uh, QBs you looked at? Who were some QBs that you were, you watch film? You see, like, I like what he's doing. I like what he's doing. I'm going to pick that off of him. Yeah, yeah. Growing up, um, you know, on the field, obviously, um, you know, I, I, I watched a lot of Johnny Manziel whenever he was at Texas A&M. Mm -hmm. um, really from my junior to senior year in high school is when I kind of, you know, kind of took the step into becoming a college athlete. You know, I wasn't a power five guy and I was undersized and overlooked. Um, but Johnny Manziel coming out of high school when I was in college, guys like Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, just watching their ability to, you know, not only stay within the offense, but when that stuff breaks down, like how they're able to you know, avoid by, by time in the backfield. You know, I watched a lot of Brett Favre growing up, a Packers fan growing up. So Brett Favre, guys like that that can improvise and, and play the style of game that I'm comfortable playing. Uh, so when stuff breaks down, it's getting chaotic. How, how can I control the chaos around me? Um, and just watching how they're scanning the field as they are moving. And there's different things like that, man. You know, those, those guys that I can emulate my game to. So, you know, I'm not going to sit down and study – you know, pocket passer for hours on hours, like, but it's still good to watch because you can see how they move. You can see how they manipulate guys in their eyes and do different, different things in, in those regards. But yeah, probably, probably Aaron Rodgers, Brett Favre and uh, Manziel are probably the biggest guys that I watched growing up. See, Johnny gets a lot of crap from people for how everything happened in Cleveland, but man, we all wanted to do a little Johnny football at some point in time. It was something, it was something about <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I said too. Like, yeah, you know, you know, all the stuff that went on and the the bad publicity off the field, but you know, yeah. you can't lose sight of the greatness that he did display at Texas A&M. And mm -hmm. you know, that's just what I tried to try to do wherever I go, just make the most of the opportunity. You know, I'm still hurting over how he did my my role, my Crimson Tide, but you know, it is. What it is man. <laughs> hey, so, but that's the greatness right there. I'm telling you. What can you do? Bro? What can you do? <laughs> so, so for you at high school, tell us about that. What offense were you guys running, and what was your experience like? Were you just were you straight up just hey I'm Q I know I'm a QB I'm a play QB or did you play any other positions? Um, the only other position I really they put me in um, on defense was like a free safety, and they like to be completely honest with you, man. Like I'm just I was a football player. Mm -hmm. Growing up, all the way through my senior year, I, I was not a quarterback. I was, don't get me wrong, I could throw the ball. I could, um, you know, manipulate guys with my eyes. I kind of knew those kind of little tricks and stuff. But it was based off of what I learned in the backyard. Like, I, I didn't grow up with the systems of, okay, they're teaching me nickel fronts. They're teaching me even. They're teaching me, you know, what is this? Like, what is rotate? What is all this stuff? I knew what uh, middle field open, middle field closed, and let's go for it. And so, like, then it was just kind of, backyard football at that point so when i got to college is really when i started to uh develop my game in terms of like you know football iq and, and really understanding what does it mean to be a quarterback like i need to know everybody's role not just offense but what are they doing defensively as well so i respect that man because a lot of guys will sit there and say oh yeah i've been reading a defense since my freshman year that's bullshit no 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 shot <laughs> not me at least not me no. i can speak on me not me <laughs> I mean, if you were at modern day, you know, the big schools, IMG and exactly. all that, yeah, you you learn and pro everything. And even then exactly. you still dudes still struggle. But for you to admit yeah. that, man, that says and I like that you said you are you were a football player. That's a high ass to me, that's a highest level of respect, man. You can do whatever you could whatever you want when you want. So I respect that. Yeah, I appreciate you. So as you go out of high school, man, and did you have any looks anywhere outside of Lindsey Wilson College? Yeah, and let me also clarify, by the way, that, you know, I, I respect and appreciate all my coaches in high school, too. I don't want that to come across like, you know, I wasn't getting coached neither because, you know, no. we were coaching. It's just, you know, just to clarify. But, um, yeah, coming out of high school, like I said, I was undersized, man. I was probably 5'9", 170, soaking wet. I mean, it just didn't happen for me uh, coming out of high school. And so um, I got there. I had an Eastern Kentucky preferred walk-on opportunity. Um, and then I had a roster spot opportunity at Davidson because they couldn't offer athletic scholarships, whatever the situation. Uh, but the only written on paper offer that I had was from Lindsey Wilson College. I had talked to guys. They wanted me to come to the schools, and it just never happened. Everybody just told me, hey, man, look, you can throw the ball. You're just too small. And, you know, so I just said, all right, sounds good. Somebody's going to give me a chance. They don't take – I just need one set of eyes like me. So, 
the, the rest is history from there. So I just <laughs> made the best of it, man. I respect that. And you won a national championship in 2020, man. Uh, yep. First off, first I want to ask, before we get into that, I want to ask, man, uh, what goes through your, what went through your mind at that time uh, when you hear people say, oh, you're too small or you just, you're, they, they, they play the numbers game with you, like the, the, yeah. the height game and all that shit. So how does one deal with that? Um, well, to be honest, for me, it just, it fuels the fire, man. Like I have so much, uh, um, internal motivation from, you know, the things that I hear other people that believe in me. Uh, so anytime somebody says things like, oh man, you're too small. I'm like, okay, heard it before. Going to hear it again. I just got to keep doing what I can do, you know, control my, the things that I can control in my life and in my preparation to where when it does become my time at the end of the game, they might say, you know what, he is a little bit too small for us, but by God, he gave everything he got and, you know, he gave him a chance. So, you know, for me, yeah, I love it. You know, keep saying it. I, I am too small. You're right. But guess what? I'm still out here doing it. <laughs> A lot of fire under your ass. That's it. What you mentioned preparation. Uh, what was your preparation uh, when in at Lindsey Wilson? What was like your prep? What did you do to hone your skills and get better? And what could you say to young guys that are in college? What, what how could you pass along that preparation to them? Yeah, you know, obviously I was in the NAI. It's a separate entity than NCAA. So you know, a lot of us get overlooked from that uh, level just because we get placed on a different level than NCAA. Right. Um, but my goal was always from the time I started playing football when I was six years old to, to now is to be a professional athlete. I've never set a plan B for myself because, you know, I just didn't want to get distracted from plan A. And when I got to college, I realized, you know, I'm at a small school, but it's, it's possible. Like my next step is pro ball. So what do I got to do? Right. And, you know, for me, it was about time management and not just time management of like, okay, you got class, let's do our homework, let's go to practice, let's do this, and then if we got time at the end of the day, we'll play the video game. But for me, it's time management and aspect of I don't know what's t what's happening tomorrow. Like, I'm going to make the most of today right now. So I know that when I go to bed tonight, I can look in the mirror and say, look, I did what I could do and controlled my controllables to give me the opportunity. So every morning I was up before class at 6 o'clock in the morning, and if it was only a 30-minute throwing session, me and my best friend uh, Demetrius Patterson, uh, who was a slot receiver there he would meet me in the gym and we would throw for 30 minutes a day i'd work on base footwork mechanics just just anything even if it was just us tossing the ball just to be comfortable doing it like it was just like you're walking to class you know we were doing that i was stuffing my face with food i went from 170 my freshman year to 210 at the end of my freshman year mm -hmm. like i just i just realized that i was at a position at the beginning of my freshman year that okay i'm not the body type i'm not mentally where i'm at to be a professional quarterback and so i just looked at the guys in comparison to my height levels like russell wilson's and you know guys like that i said okay how what size are they okay let me get there and so i was like i said stuffing my food to the point where i couldn't eat no more i was in the gym six times a week man and i got so stiff i probably shouldn't have been lifting like that but i mean i wasn't so we didn't have a strength and conditioning coach so it was just literally we're getting it on our own we're getting out of the mud at Lindsey wilson college man we did it. <laughs> no, I ain't even mad at that. It seemed like it was high school 2.0 with that one. Usually, high I, school. I mean, I'm telling you, and that's like I tell people all the time. Like we're at Guelph, you know, for training camp. I walk into the gym there, and I'm like, holy crap, this place is un incredible. Like because we walk in at our spot, we, we got the upgrades now. But when I got there as a freshman, it was a it was a little shack in the back of a, a house. <laughs> but I was like. I, and I, I'm not making this up. And I looked at it, but I was like, you know what? But the, this is ours, though. And so, right. like, I took pride in it, man. Like, no matter where I was at, I always just, like, represented it. Like, that was my, you know, I was a Green Bay Packers fan, so that was my Lambeau field. That was our, you know, that was everything that we had. So, like, we're going to have to win a championship with it or without it. Like, it, it is what it is. <laughs> and y'all did, man. So, what was it yeah, like winning did. a national championship for you and the Blue Raiders, man? I mean, that... No matter what, a national championship is a national championship, man. A ring is a ring, yeah, and a banner is a banner. So, were were you the starter at that time, or were you a backup? What what were you at that time? Yeah, so so just my whole like Lindsey Wilson path was weird because of COVID, and you know I came in, I redshirted. Uh, then after my redshirt year, they made me the third string, right? Um, which I ain't even gonna lie to you, I can 
tell coach uh, Chris Oliver this to this day. That pissed me off so bad. Um, so that even fueled the fire even more. Um, and so after that, uh, when the competition that fall got named the starter in those four years because of COVID, we ended up going 40 and five, mm. four conference championships and a national championship. And so that year though, was like the biggest shift in the locker room that I had ever felt, um, uh, with, in terms of just nobody cared about anybody's individual success. Like, you know, I was in the running for player of the year that year for the NAI Heisman, but we never talked about it. Like nobody talked about that. Nobody talked about players of the week, conference player of the week. We only care. We only talked about one and up. That was our mantra. It's on the back of our shirts. It's on our rings. And like, it was every single day. We weren't talking about just one and oh on Saturday. It was, all right, we got to go one and oh at practice. We got to go one and oh in class checks because our coaches are checking every class every single day. And if you ain't there, we'll see you for little boys club on Saturday morning, uh, you know, doing up downs on the bleachers. So like it, it was, it was everything, man. We did the small details and everybody just bought in and it was, it was honestly a, a beautiful thing to witness and come together. Cause like, you could just feel it, dude. Like we were beating every team by an average of 32 points. Like, it was it was complete domination to be honest. Like, and I'm not even just trying to say that about our team. We just had a a complete team. Wow. First of all, respect that forty and five <laughs> man, nice run, man. This shit that says a whole lot about a program and taking the opportunity, even though it was a dark time for everybody in the world with COVID, man, trying to find the positive and coming together, even at a distance. Uh, no, for sure, for sure. Respect that, man. Now I will say. Uh, at 30 years old now, shit, up downs on the bleachers. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I, I, I'll hold the play call sheet. I'm good. I, I paid my dues. I'm good. Uh-uh. Because <laughs> we... No, I'm telling you, nobody wanted that little boys club. It's just the oh, title, little no. boys club, man. It's just the title of it. <laughs> it just, it, it, yeah. Uh, uh-uh. Mm-mm, mm-mm. So transitioning now man when you get to how did you end up in the ifl with the with the vegas nighthawks man the ifl is is pretty pretty not again i'm alive and we're back (laughs) and we're back (laughs) (laughs) boy this episode numbers right here uh love it (laughs) that door gonna take a life of its own i already know they're gonna come at me about the door uh oh yeah we are gonna know that something's coming from man (laughs) <laughs> hey, I'm gonna put it on a shirt, man. The dough hit me. Yep. We're gonna make some money here, baby. <laughs> I'll let the door hit you on the way out. <laughs> now that now I'm gonna give I'll give you three percent. I'm gonna give you three percent every sale. Wow, uh, we're talking numbers now. <laughs> are we talk I got I want my dogs to eat, man. We gotta get they ain't paying yeah. y'all for the jerseys just yet. Shit. Why's eating now? <laughs> you already know. So how did you end up with the with the Vegas Nighthawks, man, when the IFL? Because the IFL, I've seen some of their games, man. I watched a little bit of it. Uh yeah. Them motherfuckers is fast. So how'd you get there? It's it is very fast paced. And the way I I describe it to people is baseball and softball. If you go mm-hmm. watch a baseball game, go watch a softball game, it's almost identical, little bit of differences, and it's just softball is way faster paced. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, for me, um, like I said, you know, I just focused on getting the opportunity to do anything. I like just just take the next step after college. So after college, um I went to the Dream Bowl all star game. And from there, I met a guy who, who told me what he did to get an agent because I was you know, talking to a lot of people about, you know, what do I need to do just to get my name out there? Like I got scammed like three times trying to get people to make highlight films for me. And I was just at the time gullible doing whatever I could to get my name out. I was like, yeah, here you go. Here's 80 bucks in the cash app, whatever it was. And no, no highlight film later, I'm down 80 bucks. And so, yeah. you know, I was DMing my film to everybody. Uh, emailing anybody I could get an email for. And then finally, somebody was like, hey, get on the NFLPA website. They got a list of all the agents on there. I sent out my email. Um, I made a, you know, sent out an email to, or a text message, probably 300 something agents. Um, I got hit back by probably 10 of them. Eight of them said, good luck. Uh, um, two of them said, hey, man, we want to sign you. One of them from my hometown, a uh, real good dude uh, named Farrell Elliott. Um, Excuse me, um, for Elliot and um, yeah, man, just from his, you know, taking a chance on me, believing in me, believing in my story, you know, from there we had um, workout, you know, that coming in to that season with um, with Winnipeg, 
and um, things were going well. Ended up not working out for whatever reason. Um, ended up getting in touch with Mike Davis, who was in the CFL at the time for, I think, 11 years. I think he coached there uh, in the mm-hmm. CFL. And um, he's down there in Vegas, and, you know, somehow they had a good relationship with my agent, and they got me there. And, um, you know, I, I was there eight games. I think the last five games I ended up starting there. Um, yeah, and just – like I said before, took my chances and ran with the opportunity. Um, you know, Mike Davis believed in me and gave me an opportunity, and that's how we that's how we landed down in Vegas. Eleven hundred yards with twenty seven touchdowns in eight games. Shit, you putting up McDonald's numbers, brother? I ain't mad at you for that one right there. Yeah, yeah, I think it was like thirty two total. Um, yeah, I mean it was fun. Don't get me wrong, it was fun. Um, we were out there just. Slinging it around a little bit. <laughs> hey, well, slinging it around, man. Hey, just as long as you ain't hey, we had the waggle, too. You know what I'm saying? We had the waggle. Yeah. They, people don't realize that the waggle is in arena football, man. So you were prepared for whatever was coming with the CFL. So yeah. out of all the teams, you end up on the reigning and defending Grey Cup champs at the time. How would it feel like getting to Toronto Argonauts getting in the locker room as a backup with Brian Scott? Shout out to Brian, man. He... Good dude, man. Good dude, and yep, yep. and and somebody else. But what was it like, man? You were considered a y- short yard, uh, short yardage quarterback sneak specialist, man. You got eight eight rushing touchdowns, threw for two touchdowns, seven hundred sixty passing yards on six three completions with ninety six attempts, man. What was it like this past season, man? And tell us what's going on. Yeah, yeah. So um, you know, like out of Vegas, um, got the opportunity. Uh, to come up here, obviously, in Toronto. And it was honestly a surprise for me whenever Toronto called. Because uh, at the time, I had been working out um, and did a workout in Montreal and thought things went really well. And uh, they had decided they were going to wait and see me play a few games in Vegas. And I was like two days out from about to move back out to Vegas to get the season going. Boom. Um, Mike Davis calls me. Hey, uh, you got your passport ready? I was like, yeah. I don't think I need it for Vegas, but yeah, I got it ready. <laughs> and uh, he's like, uh, hey, um, Toronto's about to call you and sign you. And I was like, oh, great. This is awesome. <laughs> oh, wow. Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they signed me. Um, get there. Obviously, I, I know I knew the rumblings around why I was being signed. Um, obviously, that just fueled the fire again. I just got there and, you know, I just went to work and did everything I could in camp. Just if I had free time, I was in the playbook, man. I was watching film, doing whatever I could just to learn. Um, and that's been the biggest thing for me is just wanting to learn everything that I can, just be a sponge in the league. And just because, you know, this has always been my dream and I want to stick, man. I want everything to, you know, work out the way that you know, I've worked for it to work out. And I know I got to control what I can control and just, you know, put that effort in. And you know, this year was a big learning curve. Um, you know, starting from my first action at Calgary um, to finishing out the way, you know, I did regular season in Ottawa, just that the difference in the quarterback that I even saw myself become in that time frame was just um, encouraging at the same time, you know, motivating to just keep, keep pushing, keep working and, you know, just, you know, not get complacent because that's the biggest thing you get complacent then. It's over for, you know. Man, y'all went on a run this past season, man. It didn't end the way you guys wanted it to, but we we we, we got to address the elephant in the room. We talked about it prior to recording, but I'm going to try and, uh, you know, we, we, we just going to not necessarily dive into it, but you know how it is, man. With all the reports going on and everything that's happening within the organization right now and throughout the league, and we see it all on Twitter, X, whatever the fuck Elon Musk is calling it now. Uh <laughs> <laughs> what what's what's how how are you handling it and how's everybody else within the t- on the players on the team handling it and uh if your number is called man are you gonna be ready to take the reins oh yeah no no doubt about it you know i'm i'm, I'm preparing i'm always preparing like my opportunities there you know it's gonna come it's gonna happen at some point um so i'm always gonna prepare like it's happening tomorrow right and it's happening and i'm like i'm gonna get a call at any point in time um, and regardless of the situation, no, no matter what's going on, you know, that's my mental, that's my, that's how I go into everything. Um, you know, with everything going on, you know, we try to, you know, not really, 
I don't really dive into it, you know, because it's a weird situation. But, you know, I, I think as an organization, you know, we want all parties to resolve the issue the right way, uh, get to a point to where, you know, everything is the way it should be. Uh, and that's what I'll keep it at. Um, you know, we respect everybody and respect that kind of positive work environment. So, you know, um, working towards solving things, like I said, but um, we try to focus on staying locked in at, at you know, our task. Um, we can't let outside noise and everything get in the way, but at the same time, you, know, you got to handle situations. But like I said, for me, it's just nothing's changed. Um, you know, that came out that, you know, everything's going in the way it was last year. So for me, it's the same thing. I go in, I, I compete, um, and I, I just stay ready for, for our number to be called. And if it is, it is. If it's not, it's not. And I'll be ready when it is. So. I like the, <clears throat> I like the answer, man. I mean, with everything that's going on, and I haven't really said uh, my two cents on it because it's not my place to say anything. But if I may, if that's okay, just for the people at home, if that's okay with you, Cameron. Yeah, you do you, man. I'm. Okay. I, 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 I'm gonna say I'm gonna say this. Um, and this I just this is and again I'll say this. This does not speak on anything Cameron has said or anything. This does not represent anything that he believes or thinks. This is just my two cents. Uh, man, it's a wild time that things are going on right now. But I hope everything just works out and. Man, we can get back to focusing on football, but doing it the way that it needs to be done, man, because everybody's got their own two cents about what should be done. But let's just see what happens and you're entitled to your opinion, but let them do what they got to do, man. So anyway, let's talk about something yeah, more positive, sure. man. Yeah, shit, for sure. For shit, sure. Shit, <laughs> shit. Let's, let's, I had to get that out there because I've had some people ask, like, what do I think? But shit, that's, that's all I'm going to say right now. Uh on some positive shit, man. Uh, I know your off season was kind of crazy. You know, you guys lost obviously Corey Mace, the defensive coordinator, to uh, my riders, and uh, you guys lost. Yeah, yeah. You guys lost a few pieces, but do you feel like you guys are you guys now from being at the very top to now you guys are being doubted? And what's next? What's next for the Toronto Argonauts, man? Yeah, I mean, um, the East is looking yeah. crazy. And at the end of the day, it is what it is. Like you said, you know, we've lost pieces. This is professional football. And now yeah. we're seeing it in college football more than ever, too. So right. it's football. Um, you know, people change. Coaches move. Players move. At the end of the day, it is what it is. When you're a great team and you've got success, guys want guys like that. Guys want guys that come from success. And you know, that you can't pay everybody. Um, so, you know, it's part of the business. But you just got to focus on, you know, being who we are. Focus on getting to uh, that winning culture and, you know, the guys coming in, just building that culture back and having everybody bought into the common mission, to the common goal, and just blocking out everything on the outside about, you know, where are we ranked at? Who cares? At the end of the day, if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. It doesn't matter where you're ranked at preseason. And, you know, people have shown that over and over and over again. So for us, it's just focus on the Toronto Argonauts and focus on winning games, just doing what we got to do every single day. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all it's about. The media going to try and portray it as you, the same way they did Montreal. And look how, look what happened with them, man. They was ranked at the very bottom, and they came back and bounced back and won exactly. the breakup. So if, 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 if that's what it is, man, I expect nothing but the best from everybody in the league. But y'all, you the underdogs, and hopefully everything works out for you guys this season. Now, let's have, let's have a little bit more fun, man. We're going to end it on five questions, man. The five, the rapid <laughs> fire questions, man. You ready? We're going to try. I don't know how good I am at these rapid fire questions, but I'm going to go for it. Right. Ain't nothing too crazy, man. Ain't nothing too crazy. All right. <laughs> First, let's, let's start with a little, 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 little underhand toss. Uh, what do you guys do in your spare time? Man, if I'm at the gym, I'm at the beach with it. It's, it's at the beach. I'm chilling at the beach, swimming in the ocean, fishing. It's anything to do with the beach. That's where I'm at. All right. I like that, man. You a boogie board guy? You a surfer? What, what's your thing? You fish? Fish, I fish a lot. Um, but to be honest with you, man, I'm just a body surfer. If the waves are right, I'll just get out there and ride the waves with the body. I'm not even really on the surfboard with it, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I tried, I tried. These little waves out here in the Gulf Coast ain't getting it done for me, so I had to go ahead and just stick with the body. <laughs> well, shit, you better than me. My fat ass ain't getting out there on no board doing <laughs> nothing. Shit. You got you got me there. You got me there, brother. 
Next question. Next question, man. Uh, was there since you were in Vegas, man? Did you ever have any any fun any fun stories? Anything that you, that you could share that's not too crazy? But did you, did you have any fun out there, man? Doing anything? I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I didn't gamble one time. I didn't go to a club one time. Um, like I said, I was so dialed in on okay, I gotta make it. I gotta make it. I did not want to go out and have one night of fun and you know i'm starting to learn more that you know you can maybe go out and hang out with somebody or hang out with people and you know everything be all right but for me it was just like i was just scared of losing my chance so i just mm -hmm. never did it um but i know like in terms of for on the team there was at dre's one one night and nobody knew it but then snoop dog comes out and he starts performing so <laughs> I guess that'd have been a, I, I, that would have been a cool time to go hang out with some people at the club, I guess. I mean, hey, you already know what's how Snoop get down. So it's pretty good that you stayed home, man, because uh, that UA come up, you're fried. <laughs> but, yeah, man, I, I, was, I was chilling. I was chilling. Hey, I feel it. I feel it, man. What was your favorite game this past season? Um, With Argos. Yeah, I mean, man, sa the SAS game, I don't, I don't want to bring, you know, sorry about it, but the SAS game holds a special place for me just because it was, you know, a significant win for me. Um, but I'll, I'll go ahead and just give you three. Uh, Winnipeg, for me, was a significant game, obviously a first start. Um, it, it held something, you know, special place for me just because of, you know, the circumstances behind that, just on base of, like, what I told you with, like, Winnipeg, you know, passing up me. And so that, that was a game that, you know, really meant a lot to me. Um, and then obviously the last game of the season, you know, Ottawa had significance in just terms of history. Um, and, you know, I just wanted to prove too that as the starter, you know, I, I'm out here, I can win a game. And so, you know, having that win after, you know, unfortunately the, the late loss to Winnipeg. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those three games for me were pretty significant. I'll respond to that and say, uh, the, the, the one against Sask hurt me because I was in the building for that one. So fuck you, Cameron. Uh, <laughs> Secondly, I'll say, yeah, man, sorry about that. yeah, don't worry about it, man. You you got your dub. Yeah. I'm mad at you, man. You get, it, yeah. It's so weird watching it, and like, damn, our season is done because of him. Fuck, <laughs> right, great. Oh man, great, <laughs> great, great. Yeah, uh, that last interception broke my heart. I was like, fuck. Okay, all right. <laughs> but um, the Winnipeg one, the media hyped that up so much as everybody wanted that rematch from the Grey Cup, and then <laughs> y'all <have> to. <laughs> Y'all were cold because the, everybody wanted the rematch, and then you're like, "No, nah, we ain't gonna play the starters like that. We ain't playing Chad. We ain't doing that." Oh, that, yeah. that had me cracking up. Like, why? Why would we? Why would we play our starters? The fuck? I don't know, dude. I'm just sitting there, like, all right, another week of staying off of social media because I know they're already talking smack about me on there. <laughs> <laughs> Who the fuck is Cameron Deuce? Who what is this dude? Lindsay, Lindsay Wilson College. Who? <laughs> it's like it's like a porn star school. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> nah. oh, no. oh, ah, fuck man nah. next one man I'll say uh, if you uh, what's the life plan for Coach Dan Witty I, I enjoy it um, you know a lot of guys say that he has a different type of uh, banter with you on the team but you know he's the kind of guy that is very intelligent about the game of football and the way he breaks things down, I've learned so much just, you know, listening to him talk in our meetings with the wide receivers that we do and, um, you know, during camp, our whole offensive meetings together. Uh, just listen to him break down stuff and, you know, hearing his experience and what he went through. Um, yeah, I've, been, I've enjoyed every second of it, man. It's been, it's been awesome. I like that, man. I, I, I try to understand, like, I, you really don't hear much about Coach Dean. We like the other coaches, but from what I see, man, stand-up dude knows his shit, man. And to get a great cup and get the best almost tie for the best record ever, regular season record ever, that ain't nothing to yeah. sleep on. So, dude, do know yeah, how to yeah. run a program. Yeah, no doubt. They, uh, he's, uh, the way I'll put it is, like, he's so, like, in the zone. There's times where you'll be walking past him in the hallway. He's like, what's up, what's up Coach? He hits you with a, what's up? <laughs> right back to business. Straight back to business. He's he's business like man. It's uh yeah. It's it's nice to be around him. He's a good dude. No time for the small shit, man. You know what we here yeah, for? Man. Business. Straight That's business. Straight <laughs> business. Stand on it too. Uh, last question, man. 
being a young young gun man 25 as it all have you had a chance to really take it all in and could you anything you could pass on to young guys that are coming up in the game right now man yeah i try to um i try to enjoy every moment where i'm where i'm at be where my feet are at and so you know i've had moments where you know emotions just hit me and i'll just accept it just let it happen man if i'm gonna cry about it let's cry about it and so i got off the phone with coach miller our quarterback coach um and and i was in panama city at the time mm. as soon as i got the phone with him call my mom dad facetime start bawling my eyes i cried for like 30 minutes just like man i can't believe it's actually happening i'm getting my chance and then so uh preseason versus hamilton first time ever being like in that kind of atmosphere you know where i come from it's like 5,000 people at a game, 3,000 people at a game to be in front of, you know, the Hamilton crowd like that. When they're doing the, uh, you know, um, the flyovers and everything, um, and I'm just sitting there like tears coming down my face, cold chills going, just hearing the whole crowd singing it. And I'm like, man, this is, this is everything I expected it to be. And some, because, you know, like I said, I just never came from anything like that. So like, a, like everything else, more motivation to, keep working for it because i don't ever want to experience nothing else man i'm telling you <laughs> hey i'm happy for, i'm so happy for you man i love your story man the the journey you've been on man all i can tell you man is hey as we end this keep your feet on the ground man and keep your keep your eyes on the prize man keep doing what you do and uh you got my support over here from coach phil man yes sir coach phil and hey man i appreciate you having me on here and giving me a chance to tell my story and i appreciate all the, the fans of toronto accepting me CFL fans for accepting me and for who I am, you know, small school guy, but I'm trying to tell a story just like everybody else in this game, man. So, you know, I appreciate you giving me a chance to get on here and you know, just be seen a little bit more. <laughs> You're always welcome here on the channel, man. And before we go, I will say, I already know a lot of you motherfuckers going to sit there and you going to clip the shit out of the door falling. Hey, they're gonna clip. They're gonna clip the quickness. Is what they're gonna clip. The catching it. That's what they're gonna. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm gonna watch it back, but I don't even think I looked. It's just... No, the only thing I seen was. <laughs> I'm just glad to knock your ass out. <laughs> oh, it got me. No, the first funny thing is the first time it got me, it tore up my entire back, and I was on the ground. Yeah. Now I'm so used to. It, I'm like, man, fuck maintenance. Maintenance ain't gonna do this shit. I'm gonna put this shit together my goddamn self at some point in time. But fuck it. Yeah. The door. The door has made an appearance on camera. So hey, we gonna have a T-shirt coming out for that soon, y'all. Be ready for Love that. So. <laughs> anyway, man, thank you again, brother, man. That's been another episode of Deep in the Game. We might be deep in this game, but you got the rules missing, Cameron. Thank you again, brother, and uh, everybody. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I'm gonna tell you the truth. The man's in the house. You're so crazy. The man's in the house. I'm gonna tell you the truth. The man's in the house. You're so crazy. The man's in the house.